number 78. The reaction of a metal M with a halogen, X2, proceeds by an exothermic reaction as indicated by this equation. So we have the metal, which is a solid, plus the halogen, X2, gas, yields M, X2, solid. For each of the following, indicate which option will make the reaction more exothermic. And then explain your answers. So we're going to answer each one of these, A through E. Um, and then I'll kind of give like a little explanation as we go along. Now, the first thing that we have to know here is that we are dealing with a overall exothermic reaction, right? And exothermic reactions are always a negative amount, right? Exothermic is always negative, endothermic is positive. So we have a negative amount of kilojoules per mole. And exothermic just means that you are releasing X amount of energy in the form of heat. Now, in this specific example, they did not state um, how much energy is being released. They just said that it was exothermic. So we know that the overall reaction is a negative value. Now, in order to kind of answer this question with a little bit of a visual, what I did bring up was I brought the Born-Haber cycle which basically uh, shows you all the different pieces of what actually goes on in order to make a delta H reaction. And those are the reactions that will specifically state whether you're exothermic or endothermic. So since they did state that we're exothermic, we know that the delta H, that's the enthalpy, is a negative value. And in this example, that delta H is also a negative value. So we're just gonna use this to kind of answer the question. Now this is not the specific uh, Born-Haber cycle for this, but it's gonna be generalized. Okay, so now for the problem here, we just have to indicate which option will make the reaction more exothermic. So since exothermic is negative and we want it to be more exothermic, in terms of negative and positive, do we want to go more towards more negative values or more positive? Yeah, you got it. We want to be even more of a negative. Now, some of these are going to lead us in that direction, but others are not. So if you want to become more exothermic, we need to add more negatives. We want to get rid of anything that has anything to do with positive values. So some of these will have a negative amounts of kilojoules and some will have positives and we'll all figure that out through the Born-Haber cycle. Okay, so let's start with letter A. Now letter A states whether a large radius versus a small radius for that metal, right? Because the metal is going to have a plus two ion um, when it you know, forms the ionic compound. Which one will give a more exothermic uh, number? Right, right, whether it's a large radius or a small radius. Now just know that when you're talking about radii or atomic radius, a radius is directly linked with the lattice energy. And a lattice energy is just basically the energy needed to either take a compound, so the MX2 in this case, or the CSF in this example for the Hayborn, the Born-Hayborn cycle, and it's basically just the energy needed to take your ions and convert it into a lattice, right? And a lattice is basically the solid, it's the ionic compound. So in this case, more energy means it's harder to do. And it turns out that if you have lower radii, your lattice energy, if you're dealing about it in terms of a negative amount, right? See how the lattice energy here, here's the lattice energy delta H lattice, in this case, they are making it exothermic. Now, just know that some cases you will see lattice energies being endothermic or positive, and that would be going in the reverse direction. But this is just like teacher specific, professor specific, textbook specific. Lattice energy can kind of go, you know, back and forth. So it's all about just basically the number. So in this case, since we are saying that lattice energy is exothermic, because there's a negative value here, and maybe I'll just put that over here, exothermic, 
so negative, the smaller the radius, you will make the lattice energy more exothermic. And because of this, this would be more negative because the lattice energy is negative. So if you're dropping your radius, you're going to make that more exothermic. So in this case, a smaller radius would uh, make this whole reaction exothermic because the lower the radius in the Born-Haber cycle, it's negative. So the more negative you picks up, that's all good to go. Okay, so for this one, it's a small radius. And now let's move on to the next part. So we just do the same thing. So let's see, letter B. Would a high ionization energy or a low ionization energy for the metal make it either more exothermic, which is what we want, or less exothermic? Well, in this case, if we look at the Born-Haber cycle, here, IE, is the ionization energy. And on the Born-Haber cycle, ionization energy is a positive number. It's endothermic. If you want to think of it that way, that's not good. This question specifically states that we want more exothermics. So we either have to gain more negatives or get rid of positives. This, the ionization energy would be more positive. So we don't want a high positive number. We want a low ionization energy. We want a low positive number. So it's all just because that the ionization energy is a positive number, it's endothermic, and we want to be more exothermic, so we have to limit that. And now B is done. Let's go for C. Would an increasing bond energy for the halogen be um, more, more, uh, yeah, more exothermic? Well, in this case, this is just coming from knowledge of bond energies. We've done a lot of problems on this channel in this chapter talking about bond energies and bond energies are always going to be positive. They are always going to be endothermic. And that's basically this right here. This D is the bond energy. I don't know why they put it, put it as a D, but I like to use BE, but that's where the bond energy is here. And if we look, it's a positive number. This is endothermic. So it's a positive. We want to be more negative. So would an increasing bond energy be good? Mm -mm. We would need a decreasing bond energy. So technically this one, eh, not really. Let's see. Letter D, a decreasing electro affinity. For the halogen? Well, electron affinity is the attractiveness for an electron. And on the Born-Haber cycle, electron affinity is Ea. So electron affinity, and it's a negative value. This is exothermic. And if we want to make it more exothermic, we want more negatives or less positives. Electron affinity is a negative. We gain those negatives to make it more endothermic, exothermic. So in this case, would a decreasing electron affinity make it more exothermic? Absolutely not. We want a higher uh, electron affinity because with a higher number, you'll get a higher negative. And can't choose this one either. The last one, an increasing size of the anion formed um, by the halogen. Now this one is talking about the size again. And remember the size is always talking about a atomic radius. And the radius, just like in letter A, the radius is linked to that lattice energy. Now, if you drop your radius, that's when the lattice energy will become more exothermic, more negative. So in this case, if we increase the size of the anion, that's going to increase the lattice energy. You're not going to gain negatives, you're gonna gain positives. So would a 
increasing size of the anion get you a more exothermic uh, reaction? Mm-mm. You would have to decrease the size. Because that one is all linked to the lattice energy again, which is a negative value. And that's basically the answer for all this. So this was all coming from the born hayborn cycle, just knowing which ones are endothermic, which ones are exothermic. And that should be good to go. What do you think? Thank you for tuning in. I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in future lessons. Um, I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, have a good day. Bye-bye.